Okay, so once you've picked your vehicle, whatever you're gonna either do FPV, whether it be an RC car, multi-rotor, or a fixed wing, equipment placement is very important. You can run a simple setup like I've got here with just a 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter stuck on the bottom, going straight into a little micro camera. Uh, this camera is the Mobius camera. It also records as well. Uh, on a simple servo with pan function on my RC car. So uh, again, this is the 5.8 gigahertz video frequency. So it plays well with the 2.4 and uh, it also plays well with the UHF system. So this is a very simple setup. Going with RC cars and things like that on the ground, the separation and the distance and the placement of equipment is not as crucial as say for a fixed wing or a multi-rotor. So again, this will be a very simple setup, just a camera straight through to the transmitter, transmitting to a set of goggles or a monitor and controlled with the transmitter. Moving on to something a little bit smaller, uh, or, or a smaller aircraft. This is a fixed wing aircraft. This is actually the legit wing. This is something created by Team Legit. Uh, for information about that, you can find that in the description below. You want to make sure you have good placement because this aircraft is going to be flying and it's going to be out far. Uh, you want to make sure you can depend on your equipment. You don't want any interference between your equipment. This particular aircraft is set up Again, similar to the RC car with the uh, receiver here, I'm running the Dragon Link, the 433 megahertz. I've got my antenna clear across on the other side of the wing. Uh, working with a small aircraft like this, you don't have much real estate to work with. Uh, then I've got my video transmitter on the opposite side. Same side as my camera, just keeps the wiring a little bit less uh, cluttered. I've built a little hatch here so I can swap out the video frequencies if I want to fly with friends, if I want to fly in different situations or scenarios, I've made my video transmitter swappable. But uh, again, as you can see, there's ample separation between the video transmitter and the RC receiver. You remember, this is transmitting and sending out a signal. This is receiving and looking for a signal. If the two are close in band, they can conflict with each other, reduce your range, cause fail safes, cause crashes, and uh, we want to try to limit that as much as possible. Quick note about FPV transmitters. FPV transmitters tend to get hot. Uh, they will be uh, putting out a lot of heat while they're transmitting the video signal. So you want to make sure that they're in a cool and uh, exposed area. For this particular aircraft, uh, we have it tucked away in a little compartment here with the hatch. However, we did cut out some chloroplast uh, uh, air vents in here to make sure that the video transmitter stays cool. On this particular aircraft, it's sticking out free and just uh, having the wind and the prop wash cool it off. But again, it's very, very important to keep your FPV transmitters cool. So make sure you put them in an area that's got proper airflow or ample enough cooling. Moving on to a, another wing that I have here. This is the Zeta FX61 Phantom. You've got a little bit more real estate to work with. However, my equipment that I have in here, again, does not conflict. Uh, currently, I have this one set up with a 2.4 gigahertz uh, radio control system. This one has an OSD with a GPS. Uh, this will help me with showing my speed and uh, other really cool and crucial data. We'll get into the details of GPS later on in this series. Uh, and then I've got a setup here as well for my video transmitter system. Now, Again, when I talk about separation, you have to think about the components in your aircraft. This one has 2.4 gigahertz receiving, so it's looking for a signal in the 2.4 gigahertz system. It's also got a GPS system, which is somewhere in the, uh, I believe, 900 to 1300 megahertz range. So you have to make sure that your equipment doesn't stomp on your GPS. Then you've got your video transmitter that's transmitting a signal. So uh, this is actually a test aircraft right now. We're just testing out the components. So I don't have any of my equipment uh, conflicting, but later when I set this up for long range, I'll probably end up moving my GPS farther out along with my receiver farther out in the wing and putting my video transmitter and antenna along on the other side of the wing while maintaining my CG and my center balance. Remember for a fixed wing, when you add equipment, FPV, things like that, you're gonna weigh it down. You wanna make sure the plane and the aircraft still flies correctly. So for this particular case, it's not crucial. However, uh, separation is key because your video system could stomp on your receiver. It could also stomp on your 2.4 gigahertz receiver, your GPS, whatnot. So you wanna make sure that there's ample separation on your equipment. 
Another thing that can also cause interference is your ESC and other electronics that you have, such as cameras and things like that. They could create some RF noise, uh, RF noise reducing your range or your signal quality. So make sure to be mindful of where each component goes. Going on down the line to a more complicated system, this is my Sky Hunter. Now, as you can see, this is a very large aircraft, so uh, I get the benefit of uh, putting all my equipment uh, with ample separation. Uh, you want to keep things that receive together, things that transmit together, so long as they're not conflicting in frequencies. Now, getting into my Sky Hunter, this system has an on screen display system or OSD, also known as, which offers return to home in case those fail safes and things like that. We'll get into those details later on. I've got my GPS mounted here under the wing uh, in the center of the aircraft, same side as the Dragon Link receiver antenna. My Dragon Link receiver is mounted in the wing, but my antenna is mounted way out here as far as possible. With this aircraft, I want to reach long distances and I want to make sure my frequencies aren't conflicting. I've got my 1.2 gigahertz system tucked out way out here on this wing with its antenna out here. So I've got ample separation. Uh, a foot or two is usually what you need, but the farther you can go, the better it is. I've got my motor and ESC tucked away back here, and I've got my pan and tilt and the rest of my electronics up front here. Now, going into this aircraft a little bit more in detail, this aircraft is a lot more complicated than you may need just starting out. This aircraft has a uh, whole guidance system. It's got uh, pan and tilt for the camera. It also houses a GoPro. We'll get into that a little bit later on in the series. All right, continuing on with placement. I've got here a few multi-rotors, and as you can see, multi-rotors are limited on their space. So you got less real estate to work with. This multi-rotor does not have FPV equipment set up yet. However, as you can see, it's got a GPS on a tall standing boom. Uh, the reason for this is if you do decide to start putting other electronics, your GPS will not lose its lock or conflict with any of the other electronics. Here we've got a more complicated system. This is running the APM system. Again, you've got the GPS set up high here. In my opinion, I would run a video transmitter out here on one of the booms and run my camera up front, my video receiver here on the other, my, my RC control receiver on the other side. So it gives you kind of an idea of where to place things. And lastly, I've got my personal rig here. Now this rig is a RF cluster nightmare. Uh, there's so many different components, so many different things on here that could conflict with each other. So what I did is I opted to use a very, very low milliwatt, and this is the difference between the milliwatts, uh, the 200, 400, 800. This is another benefit of the smaller uh, milliwatts. I opted to use a 200 milliwatt, 1.3 gigahertz video transmitter mounted all the way up front as far as possible uh, near my camera since these two don't really conflict. Then in the back here, I've got my Dragon Link 433 gigahertz uh, receiver with the antenna mounted as far back as possible. Then somewhere in the middle, I've added my GPS puck with a Troid ring to try to reduce as much RF interference as possible. However, sometimes when I am cruising around in this aircraft and I make a, a turn and my video signal gets reconfigured and my uh, system is reconfigured, I can lose a GPS lock. So, Placement of your electronics is very, very important. So once you've figured out the frequency, then you can go into placement and where do I put these different components. All right, guys, this concludes the uh, video frequency section and the placement of your video equipment on your aircraft or ground vehicle or multi-rotor. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching and stay tuned. We'll have a couple more episodes coming up talking about different uh, things such as OSDs and flying, things like that. Uh, I want to thank Patrick again from CSFPV for sponsoring this episode. If you guys want a chance to win a free t-shirt from CSFPV, go ahead and click on my channel. Uh, there's a link right here for that. And we'll be doing a contest on that channel. At the end of each episode uh, for the FPV series, we'll give out a prize or a uh, uh, shirt or whatnot for our subscribers. So for those contest rules and whatnot, again, make sure you click here. I'm Johnny with nitroplanes.com. Again, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next episode. So let's get right into the cameras. Cameras can range 
from high end to low end to high quality to low quality. You just kind of have to find the right one that fits your application.